Hello there. I'm Miss Monica from the Glenwood branch of the Howard County Library System. I'm here today with Miss Peggy behind the scenes. Thank you, Miss Peggy, for helping us today. And this is our next episode of STEAM Saturday. This is our bi-weekly class where we learn about science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And we learn about those things through fun activities and lots of information. So I'm so glad you're joining us today. Please remember that this class is pre-recorded. So if you need to pause it or if you want to re-watch anything, you can do that very easily. If you um, see something we're working on and you want to work along with us, just press pause and go get your supplies. So, and also do remember, I use common supplies that you should have at home. If you don't have something that I'm using, just go ahead and improvise and use something else. So I bet you can guess what we are talking about today. Can you guess? Yes, we are talking about crafts, um, which are lots of fun and found here in abundance in Maryland in the Chesapeake Bay. So I thought I'd share some information about crafts. We'll do a fun activity. So crafts, crabs are great. They have pinchers on two of their legs. They have a total of um, four legs on each side and the top ones have pinchers. So we're gonna start with a little fun activity. So I want you to go ahead and grab something that you have a lot of. So if you have like little pom-pom balls or cotton balls or chocolate chips or uh, blueberries or just something little that you have maybe like 20 of. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that we're crabs and we're gonna use our pinchers. And crabs use pinchers to pick up things. They also use them to break up their food. You know, like we cut our food so they like can break up their food. They also use them for defense, so to protect themselves. They can pinch. If you've ever been bit by a crab, it hurts. Um, so we're gonna pretend that we're crabs and that we have pinchers. And you can use, for our younger viewers, you can use your these two fingers and pinch. My older listeners, I'm gonna suggest using like your pinky and your thumb or your ring finger and your thumb, it's a little harder. Or if you don't wanna do that, and you have a clothespin, you can also use the clothespin. And we're gonna pick up things just using pinchers. Just, see, this is a little harder, okay? And we're gonna see how many things that we can pick up in 30 minutes. So go ahead and pause the screen if you would like to go and get a, um, a material. Uh, I have a paper plate to hold my, one of those that you don't want to. And okay, are you back? Awesome, you've got something to pinch and pretend that you're crap. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the timer on my phone to set a timer for 30 seconds. And we're gonna see how many of these that we can pick up. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, some of these down because I, I kind of test this before and I cannot pick up all of these in 30 seconds. But I'm gonna put one on, some on one half of the plate and then I'm gonna pinch and go on the other so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so are we ready? Ready, set, go. I'm gonna do one at a time. Of course, I'm liking mine to be like all neat and tidy. I'm gonna switch, try this one. You can try all different fingers, see which ones work best. Stop. How many did you, ooh, there we go, do it again. Okay, so let's see, cancel that. Um, it's still going. It reminds me of waking up in the morning, hearing the alarm. So, so if you don't have a phone or you don't have a timer, you can always have one person count to 30 and then the other person see if you're working with somebody or you can count your head too. So how many of your items did you pick up using your crab pinchers? I picked up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I have a dozen. That's awesome. Did anybody else have a dozen? Yeah? Cool. You're great little crabs. You got your pinchers. So that's a fun little activity. So let me go ahead and pick that up. And we're going to learn about some crabs. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. And I have a um, very fun little. Um, PowerPoint that I just has some pictures of. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's see.
Okay, let's see where that is. Here we go. Okay, here we go, sorry. So let's see. Let me bring this up. Sorry, this acts a little slow sometimes. Okay, so we've got some pictures of crabs. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So this is one of the crabs. Um, and this one has like a smaller arm or leg rather with the pincher um, and then a smaller one. And you can see here that crabs actually do have two eyes. Their eyes are actually on eye stalks. You can see right here, they're kind of um, like out of there. They're not as close to their body as our eyes are. Um, they come out. And the reason is, is those stalks can move each way. So a crab can actually look in one direction and look at the other direction at the same time to see if a predator is coming or what's going on, which is kind of neat. So let's look at our next slide. So this one shows their shell a little bit. They all have hard shell, uh, outer shells or outer, uh, outer shells, um, and they use those for protection. They do actually grow new ones, uh, soft shells underneath, and then they, um, they get rid of their old shell. So they do uh, do that, which is really cool. It's called molting. And let's see. So a couple things about crabs. So there are female and male crabs. And these are great pictures. You can see all their different legs. Um, so you can see they have um, the four legs on, on one side and the fifth, I'm sorry, they have a total of 10 legs. I think I said eight before, but they have a total of 10. And uh, the, the top ones will have the pinchers here. So it's actually illegal here in Maryland to crab or take out of the bay uh, female crabs. So you do need to know the difference between the males and the females. Um, so they have a apron on the bottom right here. And for the females, they'll have a wider apron. The males have a more narrow apron um, right there. So my dad actually taught me how to tell this really easily. He said on the females, their apron is going to look like the Washington Capitol building, and the males are going to look like they have the Washington Monument. So if we go crabbing and we catch the females with a wider, the, the Washington Capitol, we throw those back right away. Um, you are not allowed to keep those and eat them, it's against the law. So the other thing you have to be careful about when you're crabbing is you need to measure tip to tip on their, their shell, on the back of the, uh, the, the, the hard shell. Um, if it is under a certain measurement, you have to throw those back as well because they are too young to take out. So um, just some, some things to know. I know that the DNR um, officers and ships patrolled our waters and they will stop and see you see what you're doing if you're crabbing and if you're checking this and throwing them back and such. So, so let's go crabbing. These are some pictures of uh, two little boys crabbing and you'll see um, some things that they use to crab. So you're gonna need a net. You're gonna need a bucket with some water. Use the same water that you're crabbing from. So we use the water right, right here. Um, and you're gonna need some sort of bait. So you're gonna need um, like raw chicken they like, or they like little pieces of hot dogs. You're also gonna need something to catch them with. And in these pictures, they're using a pole with a string with a hook that they put uh, pieces of hot dogs on. You can also use crab traps. So if you have a crab trap, um, they are devices that have a hole in the bottom where the crab comes in when they smell the food and then they get, um, they get trapped in the trap. Uh, it's hard to get out, easy to get in, hard to get out. Um, these are on string and they get dropped on the bottom of, of the body of water that you're crabbing. Um, and then they open up from the top and you can get the crabs out. This is one way we, we personally prefer um, using the poles, but you could use either one. So crabbing takes a lot of patience because sometimes they like to bite and steal your, your food, your hot dog or something that you're uh, crabbing with and then they scuttle away. Also, speaking of scuttling, did you know that um, a crab's leg is actually bend facing sideways? So the top of their knees um, face the side and that's why they, they, go, they, they travel sideways. Our knees, the top of our knees, they face the front so we walk forward. Um, so that's kind of an interesting fact about crabs. They also have antenna as well on their heads uh, so that they can feel and see where to go and what's going on. So let's see if this works here. Sorry. Um, okay, so here are some pictures of 
crabs that have been caught. Um, you can see the one picture right here with a bucket with a crab that he's enjoying a piece of hot dog. Um, we like to give them a little snack, um, whatever was on the hook so that they can, they can eat it. Um, they do get a little feisty with each other. Sometimes if you have more than one, these crabs right here, this was, I believe in the springtime, they were a little small. These got thrown back in general. Um, when we go crabbing, we just release them. Um, my kids don't like to eat them. So, um, they just like to crab for fun, check out the crabs, see what they look like, um, you know, for a little bit. And then we just put them right back. Um, maybe they get caught the next day. I don't know. So the net does help when you pull it up from the rod that you can, uh, or the stick that you can grab it and then put it in the bucket. So that's a lot of fun. I hope that you get a chance to go crabbing and that you get to see some crabs up close. Um, so hope you can go crabbing soon. There you go. And you can see little poles there a little better. They've just got some string attached to the end. Um, these are wound up because I think they're getting ready to store them. Um, and you just need your body of water and like I said, a little food source and you can go crabbing. So lots of fun to go crabbing um, and seeing the, they were back. Okay, thank you. And so, yeah, they're, they're just, they're really cool. They, and they kind of go on the ocean floor, or the, the floor of the Chesapeake, they'll, they'll go up in different waters as they get bigger. Um, they do lay eggs and they do eat algae and small animals. So uh, you want to be really careful when you go crabbing that that you don't get pinched. Um, if they pinch you, it hurts, kind of like they're biting you. Um, you can imagine um, their pinchers are pretty sharp. So let's have a little fun with some an activity. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm gonna move this down a little bit so that you can see, or actually I might just hold it up today. Um, so we're gonna make a crab. And for our crab, you're gonna need some really just some basic um, supplies. You're going to need a sheet or two of red construction paper or cardstock. Whatever you have is absolutely fine. And you're going to cut that into different size pieces. So you're going to need a pair of scissors. Uh, make sure you have like safety scissors or child scissors. These are grown-up scissors. Um, you want to use either a glue stick, some regular tape, some regular glue, whatever sticky stuff you have at home is fine. Um, I'm going to use double stick tape today just so that it sticks a little quicker so that it can hold things up and show you. Um, also, you're going to need some googly eyes. I happen to have the ones that are uh, sticker like that, you know, stick right on. But if you have the ones that glue on, those will work absolutely fine. So um, some googly eyes. And then I'm going to show you what sizes I have of everything. So you're going to take your paper. You're going to want one, and I already have the tape on this one. Um, you're going to want one large oval like this. And then you're going to need some uh, long strips like this and some shorter strips. So just cut a bunch of these. Um, you'll need for the 10 legs, um, and then you'll need it for the eye stalks as well. So you'll need those. And then um, I don't know why I keep wanting to say that they have eight, um, but they have with the pinchers, they have one more on each side. So it's 10. Um, so excuse me that I keep interchanging that. I don't know why I keep wanting to say that. Uh, and then you're going to need one smaller oval like that. And then you're going to need a bunch of little circles like that. Okay. So these are going to be made for the claws. Um, so to make the claws, it's really easy. We're just gonna cut these in half, like so, okay? And then you're just gonna put them like that. So I'm gonna get a little piece of tape. I'm gonna make the claws first. These are the pinchers, the claw, and just a little piece of tape there and put them like so. Okay, you're gonna make two of those. And like so, okay? Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to take these longer pieces, these strips, okay? And you're just going to fan fold them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like you're making a fan, okay? And it goes like that, see? Like so. And you're gonna wanna do eight of those, like so, okay? And then they don't need to be perfect. They don't need to be exactly symmetrical and equal. And then you're just gonna put some pieces of tape like that. And you're gonna put the little legs right here, okay? Just line them up 
on each side. I'm gonna do four on each side, like so. Okay, and then you're going to take one of the shorter pieces, or you can take one of the longer pieces, cut it in half, and you're going to put the claw on there, the pincher, okay, like so. And then those are going to go right there. And you're going to want to do the same exact thing on the other side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that small oval and you're going to attach it. Just pretend that this other one is done. You're going to attach it like this. And then you are going to take the top, actually put a little piece of tape here too. These are like real quickly and we can see them like that. We need two more on that side. Um, and then see there's a little piece of tape right there. And then you're gonna fold this over, but don't crease it on top. Just bend it over, but don't crease it like so. Okay. Now you're gonna bend that smaller piece up like so. And go ahead and crease that, okay? And this is where you're gonna to wanna to put the eye stops on. So you have those little pieces and I have googly eyes. And what I found when I did mine is I stuck my googly eye on the eye stock and then it was still sticky on the back and I didn't want it to stick to my crab. So then I just took another little circle and stuck it on like that. And it just fell like so. And then again, just another little piece of tape or glue, uh, whichever one you have. And then you can put that right on, like so, okay? And there's this eye. You could make the eye stop a little shorter. That one's kind of longer, but... And then you're gonna do the same thing for the other side. The other thing you're gonna need is a popsicle stick. So either if you have the larger size or the smaller size, whichever one you have is absolutely fine. And what you're gonna do is, again, with tape, you're just going to tape that on the back. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like all finished. And then you have your walking crab. He's got kind of floppy eyes. You can kind of put these up a little bit if you wanted to, like so. And there's your crab, okay, like so. Super fun. You can have little races with these with your, your siblings or your friends or your grown up. Super cute. There we go. Crabby fun. And I think I even made this with the eight legs versus the 10. So I can, now I'm going to have to look that up. You know what? That is my challenge for you. Since I keep messing up and saying eight legs and 10 legs, I want you to go look and see which one it is. And then you can let me know. Let's see, my shirt has the 10. Um, I don't know why I'm stuck on eight legs with crabs, but maybe uh, my crab got in a fight and lost one of his legs. I don't know, but go ahead and research that yourself because um, I'm cracking myself up over this. So speaking of finding out about the crab's legs and other things, um you can come to the library we've got lots of different books on crabs that you can check out and find out lots more information about our crab friends in the chesapeake bay so first we have ocean life up close crabs by rebecca pettiford pettiford and this is a great book full of facts about crabs and not just blue crabs that we find in the chesapeake but hermit crabs and cider crabs and lots of different crabs um, really everything you want to know about crabs comes from this book, which is great. Uh, then we have, I've shown this um, in some of the other classes that we've done this summer. Um, this is Exploring the Chesapeake. Um, this is a series just on the Chesapeake Bay, which I think really a fascinating series of books. This is Plants and Animals of the Chesapeake Bay by Kathleen Connors. And this is a great book if you want to know more about the plants and animals who live near and um, in the bay. And it's got information on our blue crabs, oysters, blue herons, sea turtles, lots of different animals and plants, which is a really cool book. Next we have, and I just adore this author and illustrator, his books are beautiful. Yovel, Yovel Zomer, I hope I said his name correctly. This is the big book of the blue. And I did a flower uh, recommendation on one of his other books about flowers. This is his book about sea life and the oceans, and it is fascinating. I'm just going to show you a couple pictures. His illustrations are just 
stunning. Um, it makes me want to take this book and like, I want these framed in my house. They're so gorgeous. So this is the, the one about crabs and there's lots of really neat um, information about crabs, which is that's like, they run sideways. Um, they also, this, this is something new that I learned about crabs from this book is that crabs will use their claws, um, their pinchers, and they will tap out messages to other crabs on rocks. So if there's like a, like a shark or a predator, some, somebody that they don't like nearby, they might tap really quickly. Um, that's fascinating that a little crab does that. So um, this is the big book of Blue. Um, I hope you'll check that one out at the library. It's a big book too, which is kind of exciting. Um, also for our younger readers, I do have a couple storybooks, picture books, uh, that involve crabs that I just love. This is Peanut Butter and Jellyfish by Jarrett K. Paskafka. I'm going to say that wrong. Um, there you go. Screenshot it. I also have a, a list uh, going that your grown up got as well in the email. Um, super fun book about friendship, about the jellyfish um, and the seahorse and Krabby Crab. Uh, that, that's kind of crabby because that's kind of. Um, what crabs are known for and um, just how they become friends with Mr. Crab and super fun book. We also have the great and wonderful Eric Carl, who just never disappoints. He recently passed away, which makes me so sad because his stories and his illustrations are beautiful and timeless and they tell a great story for kids. So this is a house for hermit crab. So we're talking about like blue crabs a lot today, but there's also a whole species of hermit crabs. Um, this is a type of crab that you know, a lot of people might have as a pet. Um, super fun book about a hermit crab. And also, this is, oh, that's, this is another book real quickly about hermit crabs, caring for hermit crabs. If you're thinking about um, getting a hermit crab this summer, this would be a great book as well. Um, also, last but not least, I know I have a couple more book suggestions. I just couldn't pick uh, two or three to share with you. I have to pick a whole bunch. So this is Moonlight Crab Count. Um, so there are people, volunteers uh, across the, um, the earth that, that do crab counts. So uh, especially here in the Chesapeake, crabs uh, were really declining the number of crabs in the bay. People were over crabbing. Uh, I showed you how to crab, but I also talked to you a little bit about crabbing responsibly um, and not taking the females and not taking the younger crabs and and just making sure you don't take too many if you're going to eat them. Um, so they've really uh, come down on the crabbing industry and made sure that they're crabbing responsibly, but they wanna make sure that those counts of crabs are going back up, that their species aren't becoming endangered or um, you know having problems or anything. So they do um, have volunteers here in, the, um, in Maryland. They have uh, across the Atlantic and the Chesapeake, they have uh, crab counters that go out at certain times and they, they count the crabs. Um, so this is Moonlight Crab Count. Um, it's by Dr. Nettie Mathala and Jennifer Keats Curtis, and it's illustrated by Veronica V. Jones. It's a really interesting book about a, moon, a, a, a moonlight uh, in the evening crab count that a little girl does with her, her mother. So those are some books that you can check out from your local library have your grown up go online and put them on hold for you. And then you can go to your local branch. We are now open um, and you can pick those up and you can also browse from some other books. So it was so nice to see you. Please make sure your grown up also signs you up for our next episode of Steam Saturday, which I believe will be in two weeks. Um, and just also remember if you haven't seen any of our past Steam Saturday uh, episodes, or if you're looking for some other virtual classes, especially for younger kids or older kids or adults and teenagers, they are all on our YouTube channel. So you can um, right away click on them and watch them. So I hope to see you really, really soon. Thank you so much for joining us today. You have a great day. Take care.